For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, small cell, Wi Fi, and much, much more. Comscope, thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. Our show, of course, is brought to you by our friends at Comscope. Repeat viewers of the show will know that we usually like to keep our conversation relative to heterogeneous networks and some of the attendant technology like fiber optic cabling, cell towers, that sort of thing. But occasionally we delve into the much, much more category like I mentioned in the tagline, and this week we've got a show for you that delves into that. I'd like to introduce Jeff Kagan, who has partnered with RCR Wireless News to provide us with recurring editorial columns that draw on his years of telecom analyst experience to offer up color commentary, mostly in the carrier space as well as consolidation and other trends affecting telecom companies. So by way of an introduction, I'd like to play an interview that I had with Jeff earlier this week. All right, thanks for joining us, Jeff. We're really looking forward to your contributions to RCR Wireless News. But uh, as a point of introduction, could you tell our viewers a little bit about your background in telecom? Well, I guess that's probably a good way to start. I started in telecom. It was probably around 85-ish. So that's almost, actually, that's 30 years. Um, when you ask me that question, I realize how long it's been. I've seen a lot of change in the industry. You know, when I got into the industry, I was an analyst and, you know, the competitors were AT&T and with the baby bells and then MCI and Sprint came in, but it was local and long distance and, um, and then wireless and then internet and then, you know, the, the competition changed and all the consolidation in the industry. And it seems like every five to seven to 10 years, the industry goes through a transformation. It, it, it goes from what it was to what it, it, it's going to be for the next five to 10 years. And it's, it's been happening that way, you know, every, every decade for, for as long as I can remember. And we went through a change, what, about eight years ago when uh, RIM uh, with the BlackBerry was the leader and Nokia was the leader. And then suddenly overnight it was, it was Apple iPhone and, and it was Google Android and, and all, of, all they just took over the leadership position almost overnight in, in the wireless space. So even though we think we know the direction that the wireless industry is heading in, it can change overnight in the blink of an eye. And you have to you have to plan and you have to prepare. And some companies have done well and some companies have not. They've struggled. Um, the next question is, well, what's the next big transformation that we're going to see happen? And that has launched. We've started that next wave. And um, the next question is, who's going to be leading, both on the handset side and on the network side? Because the networks are converging. Um, and it's not just separate uh, networks with wireless and, and wireline, but it's, it's all of these different services together under one company uh, in, in many cases. So the entire background of the industry is changing. There are more opportunities than ever before, but there are more risks than ever before too. And um, it was actually, thank, I appreciate you asking that question because I didn't realize it had been 30 years since I've been doing this. Yeah, that's a really salient point that the industry really does seem to reinvent itself every decade, every five years. Uh, so let's just sort of, of look back at the last decade and maybe if you could tell us from your perspective, what are some of the key factors that have brought us to where we are right now? Why is it that AT&T and Verizon from the carrier perspective are so far out ahead of T-Mobile and Sprint? Well, that's a good question. We should pull the camera back and we should look at uh, the industry at where we were say 10 years ago. 10 years ago was around 2004, 2005. <clears throat> and that's when the industry went through a major transformation. If you remember, Ed Whitaker, CEO of SBC, he tried to acquire AT&T in the late 90s, but the regulators said no. And he, um, he, he 
throttled back for several years. And then he tried again uh, when AT&T was smaller and weaker um, around 2004, I guess. And uh, that time he was successful. So SBC, the smallest of the baby bells, of the seven baby bells, um, acquired AT&T, took the brand name, and, and they also acquired Bell South, and they also acquired Singular, and they became a powerhouse in the industry. It took them a few years to digest it and to make, make it all work together, but that company has become a very successful uh, company. The Baby Bells were at a crossroads. I call it a wave. The wave is basically something that rises and it crests and then it falls. And companies are somewhere on that wave. Some they're either rising or they've crested or they've or they've fallen. We see many companies that have have done it all. We've seen you know Motorola, Nokia, BlackBerry. They've risen, they've crested, and they've fallen. And and we're, when we look at the baby bells, we say um, they are that they had that that same um, threat back around 2000, 2004. AT&T uh, acquired a number of other companies, and they rose. And then they, instead of cresting and falling, they continue to rise because they transformed themselves. Same as Verizon. Verizon continued to transform itself and did very well going forward. Now, Sprint and T-Mobile uh, struggled. Sprint acquired Nextel, T-Mobile, you know, fell off the deep end. AT&T and Verizon moved from 2G successfully to 3G, successfully to 4G, and they moved into the smartphone world but but Sprint and and, and uh, T-Mobile really did not. They struggled to move from 2G to 3G, and, and they struggled for years. Now, all of a sudden, in the last year or two, we're seeing them starting to wake up. We're seeing them starting to recover. So all of a sudden, we're realizing that we now have four strong, growing um, wireless companies in the United States. And that's very um, inspiring. That's very uh, exciting. But there are a lot of opportunities and there are a lot of risks still. So you have to wonder if, if Sprint and T-Mobile are going to continue to grow, where are they going to take business from? Are they going to win it from companies like AT&T and Verizon? Or are they going to win it from the other side, the smaller companies, the, the U.S. Cellular, the C Spire, the track phone, all, you know, Google. Google is getting into the wireless space. Now, is Google going to transform the wireless industry? That's something that could, could have an impact as well. And you're going to see other companies moving into the wireless business. I started off in telecom on the wireline side, but then all of a sudden, wireless started becoming more and more important. And I think today, wireless as an industry is key to transforming not just itself, but other industries. We're, we're seeing companies like AT&T Mobility and, and, and Verizon Wireless and, and, um, and even Sprint. You know, they're, they're transforming the retail industry, they're transforming the healthcare industry, they're transforming the automotive industry. Um, we're seeing automotive manufacturers working with wireless carriers and implementing um, wireless technology into the dashboard allowing you to get not only live traffic, but weather and communications and news and, and all of the basic web access that you get from your laptop or from your smartphone. And this is just the beginning. This is the very early days of that transformation. So I think the wireless space is the place to be. It's the center of the universe. And uh, so I think that RCR Wireless and, and um, in particular, but the, but the entire industry as a whole, we are where every other industry and every other government is, is, is looking because this is the way we're going to be communicating and sharing and, and distributing information going forward. Even the cable television industry, you know, look at cable TV. You've got Comcast with Xfinity, you know, and, and you've got, and now with, with the new merger that was, that was um, uh, applied for today uh, with, between Charter and, and, and Time Warner. You know, it's all got to do with wireless because we used to be able to sit down in front of our TV in our living room and watch watch a television program at a certain time. But going forward, we watch anything we want, anytime we want, any place we are, on any device that we have using the wireless network. We still watch it from our TV and our home, but we also watch it from our smartphone or from our tablet, you know, or, or from our, um, our smart watches. And, and going forward, it's gonna be more and more like that. So we're seeing industries like cable television, 
transform themselves using wireless, using the, the, what wireless allows them to become going forward. And that's something that um, the cable TV industry has struggled with moving into the wireless world, but that's something that they're gonna have to come to terms with and they're gonna have to be successful with because going forward, I think wireless is the center of the universe. Yeah, you mentioned this convergence between uh, cable television operators and uh, wireless network operators, and that really is a, a going interest. And I, I'm curious, uh, is one of the primary drivers of this the wireless companies wanting to get access to the cable companies' fiber networks so that they can utilize that for offload purposes? Or is there some other major push that's that's moving telecom into the sort of media content delivery space? That's a good question. I think there's probably a lot more than just one answer. There's probably a number of answers. But the, the bottom line is the reason for all of this progress is investors, is shareholders. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that these are public companies and they have to keep on showing more growth quarter after quarter, year after year, I don't think you would be seeing this kind of, of innovation. But because shareholders um, require um, to be paid off, otherwise they're gonna go to another investment, um, you're seeing the wireless companies and the, and the telephone companies and the cable television companies all introduce brand new technologies, some which work well and some which don't, but they keep trying all sorts of new things. That's why, for instance, AT&T is moving into Mexico. That's why AT&T wants to acquire uh, DirecTV. Um, th that's why, um, you know, with Verizon, that's why they acquired the, the, the cable television um, spectrum when the cable TV companies failed at wireless. Um, you know, so it's, it, you're seeing, these companies move more and more um, into growth positions that are not necessarily traditional telecom or traditional wireless. Um, you're seeing them continue to grow, and these are big opportunities. And if they pan out, they're going to be big wins you know, for these companies. But that's another point. I, I see a split coming in this industry. It, traditionally, we've seen wireless pretty much be the same from all providers, but going forward, I think you look at AT&T and Verizon on one side because they offer wireless and wireline and television and internet and they're moving into all these other industry segments. And then you've got companies like Sprint and T-Mobile who are basically just on the wireless side. There's opportunities in both. There's gross opportunities on both sides of this coin. So it's not like one side is better than the other, but I don't think we're gonna be able to measure them all the same going forward. I think at some point we're gonna to have to draw a line down the middle and say, we'll measure and look at the success of a Verizon and an AT&T. And then separately, we'll do the same with a, with a Sprint and a T-Mobile and whoever else is behind them. And you know, and a note to our uh, viewers, Jeff has a, uh written about these two topics fairly extensively in his first two columns that are up on the rcrwireless.com website. You can just search Kagan and you'll be able to find those. Jeff, why don't we uh, look forward a little bit and give us an idea of some of the trends that you're watching that our readers might see your commentary on in the future. My commentary. Well, you know, my commentary is I, I look at the news and I, look and I wonder what's going to be happening next. This industry is such an exciting place to be. I don't know if everybody realizes that or not. I think most people do. Most people who are gonna be watching me understand that. But for, for, for other people who are, who are more casually involved with it, this is one of the most exciting uh, growth opportunities that this industry, that this country has ever seen. Wireless is an incredible, incredible um, growth story. And it's not just in traditional wireless, you know, that we all think of, but it's, it, it's in all these other industries that it's going to be transforming. You know, it, it's, in, um, it's in the business side uh, as well. It's, it's helping you know, companies keep track of all of their, um, their, their, their supplies and the trucks and where everything is on the road or in parking lots or in storage facilities. You know, wireless is gonna be you know, keeping us connected in ways that we've never imagined before. And you've got new competitors that are moving in all the time too. You've got voice over IP and you've got, um, and, and you've got companies that are coming in trying to take advantage of the wireless industry and, 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 and morph their technology in as well. I think the wireless industry looks totally different 10 years ago than it does today. I think we can all understand with Apple iPhone and with Google Android and with all the apps that we're using, 
you know, just seven years ago, we had what, 250 to 500 apps. And today we have over a million and, and, and it's still growing. Well, going forward, you know, we're just in the middle of this, of this, of this transformation. And it's not even the middle, we're just the beginning of this transformation. What's this industry going to look like five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now? There is an incredible opportunity. It's not like wireline is going away. Wireline is still going to be there. You're still going to have plenty of opportunities to connect your, your businesses and your homes. But wireless gives you the chance to be uh, free and to be out and about. But it also gives you the chance to, you know, interact with the Internet and with, with individuals and with businesses and with inventory um, and, and with, with, with government and with, you know, the, for everyone from the police to the fire and, 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 and all the other organizations that we, that we use. Everything is going wireless, and these wireless networks are growing as fast as they possibly can. And, and you know, probably hit a few hiccup points like we always have in the past when we grow a little bit too fast, and and there's just not quite enough capacity. And one of the big worries when it comes to capacity that I have is looking at the spectrum, the limited spectrum that we have. We don't have enough spectrum. You know, there's more and more people coming online, more and more people are using apps, more and more people are sucking the spectrum dry, and you know, there's just not enough to go around. So at some point, we're going to have to start slowing down the usage of the spectrum, or we're going to have to figure out new ways to, to, to interact with the spectrum. New technology is going to help with that, but that's definitely a problem. That's a, that's a bumpy road that we have going ahead. So there's plenty of issues to write about, and, and there, there are plenty of new companies that are coming in, like Google, that want to transform the space. Will they? You know, who knows? You know, Google, with their, with their um, the, the Nexus 5 phone, why they chose that phone to be the leader coming out in this network. Nobody buys that phone. So how successful is that network going to be? Is Google going to start selling other Android phones like the Samsung's and other ones that are popular? Um, and if they do, then the, then the Google network could stand a chance. But, you know, I, I'm not going to assume that anything is going to be successful just because it's got a, a brand name on it. You've got the pay space. You know, you got the ePay space, the e-wallet. Um, going forward, you know, you got you got Dan Schulman over over at PayPal, um, who was taking over PayPal. PayPal was a leader in that space. Going forward, you got Apple Pay, and, and you got Google Wallet, and, and you got Currency, which is coming, and you got all these other companies and all these other new technologies that are going to transform this space. It's exciting. There are huge opportunities if you want to work in this industry. There are huge opportunities if you just want to watch and invest in this industry. Um, but one thing is for sure. It was very different 10 years ago, and it's going to be just as different 10 years from now. The question is, well, what's it going to look like five or 10 years from now? And it's impossible to know for sure, but that's why we're in the business. Well, Jeff, you're right. Between mobile money, the internet of everything, connected cars, wireless really is a fast evolving space. And we look forward to sort of riding that wave with you here at RCR Wireless. So welcome to the team, and thanks for joining me on HeadNet Happenings. Thanks very much. That was Jeff Kagan, ladies and gentlemen. You can look for his insights and commentary on the RCR Wireless News website. For all multimedia content, I'd encourage you to check out the RCR TV website as well as the RCR Wireless News YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to our daily e-news blast for the most relevant news delivered straight to your inbox every day. And in a bit of a programming note, which I'm so fond of giving, I'd like to point out that we're going to be taking HetNet happenings on the road for the next two weeks. We'll be over on the French Riviera for the TM Forum show, so we'll bring you some coverage of that. Then the following week, we're going to be at the Small Cell World Summit in London, so look for some multimedia content from that show as well. Thanks for tuning in to HetNet Happenings, and we'll see you next week. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.